everybody, it's Annette from The Art of Intuition, and today we are going to talk about how we know when a program is completely gone and when we have busted through a human program that we've been working on. Now, when we talk about human programming, we talk about different perceptions our human has, you know, our, our deep-rooted belief in something. You, a lot of people will call it a belief, some people call it programming. A lot of times the programming word came in because if we think of ourselves as kind of a human vessel in a sense, um, a computer program, we've been programmed to do certain things, we're programmed to act a certain way, our human DNA acts as that programming in a sense, how we're going to react, if we're going to see ourselves as a victim in this story, if we're going to always think of ourselves, and that is the cornerstone of our human aspect, to always think of itself as the only thing that exists. So when we talk about programming, that's what we're talking about. How, what is my strongest belief here? You know, how did this reality get created? Do I believe I'm not worthy of this? Do I believe I'm not worthy of that? Do I believe that, that I need to go very small? And some people will call it almost like we kind of tuck ourselves in, you know, like we go into our shell, we kind of, we kind of will turtle in in a sense. When am I doing that? When am I not speaking up for myself? When am I letting things go and go and go and go that are not okay and have not been okay in a long time? At what point do I stand up and say, that's not okay? How did I create this? At what part have we been overstepping? Overstepping into someone else's world because we don't like the way they're doing it. Because we think we know more than they do. You know, our human programming runs deep. And there's a zillion different programs beyond programs among programs. And the belief that if we, you know, don't do everything as it, what we're taught to do as humans, you know, save money for retirement, just one, you know, that is, what we could look at that and say that's a human program to believe that there's, there's a finite amount of money. And if we don't make it in these years, then we won't have anything when we, we get older. That is a belief, you know, is that true? No, depending on what realities you live in. If you live in the human realities, if that's the collectives you plug up to, then you're not going to pursue your soul aligned reality. You know, you're going to be stuck in your human template. You know, what template are we working toward? What decisions are we, what decisions, the decisions we're making, what template are they serving? Are they feeding into the human template? Are they feeding into our soul template? Because we have different templates. We don't just have one. We have a human template, which is the age we're supposed to live to, the age we're supposed to, you know, when our template was over. We have a soul aligned template. They're not the same ones. They're not the same things. We won't do the same things in each template. So when we start leaving, and ascension is really leaving that human template. That's basically what it is. You're pulling out of that human template. You're buttoning all your realities up as best we can in the beginning. And later we, we learn how to do them much better as far as ending them, buttoning them up, trying to realign them, trying to rework them. Normally for me, starting over is always easier <laughs> than to try to make people fit back into a, a reality that's higher aligned. Might not be the highest in that moment, but it's higher line than the last one and trying to make people fit into that that are not in the space to fit into that yet. You know, everyone has a DNA. Everyone has a, a marker when they're supposed to start their ascension journey. And sometimes it's just not their time yet. And we kind of want to drag everybody with us. That's a big program we always have. We want to drag everybody with us. Are we doing things for ourselves? Do we want fame, fortune, money? Those are all human-driven programs. It doesn't mean you don't have those things in soul-aligned realities, but we use them differently. We understand why they're there. We understand that they're there to assist people, to reach more people we're not in it for ourselves anymore. You know, the human templates are all about us. You know, they begin with us, they end with us. Everything we do, every decision we make has to do with us. It's like we're a four-year-old child that's and it's all about us. And it's all about us till we, we, we die in our if we stay in our human template for, for that entire span. That's how it is, you know. And that's all the programming, programming we have to overcome. And we, and normally we're going to find programs, it's kind of like the Russian dolls, you know, it's program within a program within a program within a program. Even the metaphysical stuff becomes, that's even a big program. The spiritual stuff's kind of a big program because we kind of can get very sucked into that type of stuff where spiritual stuff is there for us to awaken, to us to see, hey, there's more than just the physical, there's more going on here. But if we get stuck in just that, we always will keep a, 
a distance between us and those higher aspects of us. When I hear anyone talking about spirit guides, when I hear anyone talking about, um, you know, the channeling, that's still a separated state. You know, even if they're channeling, you know, galactic aspects, it's still, it's still a separated state. You know, even if you see people doing trans channeling, it's still a separated state. And trans channeling is when, theoretically, I'm, I'm going to say that because I'm going to explain that in a minute. You, you know, invite something else into your body and you talk for that. That's trans channeling. Now, technically, you can't do that because you can only invite in yourself. <laughs> There's nobody else out there. Even when you're channeling, you're just channeling higher aspects of yourself. And these are important parts of the process we go through to start to expand, to start to open up. These cannot be overlooked. But they're still separated states. We haven't embodied. We still think they're separate than us. You know, they're they're something better than I am. They're bigger than me. They're something I can tap into but can't live. Um, that's kind of the misconception about those those realities. So when you start breaking out of those and say, No, I want to be spirit and I want to be spirit embodied. I don't want to just be spiritual. You realize that that's a whole program. You know, that's a whole different, a different thing that we believe. Can we go to that next step? You know, that's really what Ascension is. It's going beyond all of this stuff. It's going to go beyond me just talking to, to my angels, to becoming, to embodying angelic energy and becoming an angel in real life. And everything, every reality where I'm not doing that, then I have to work through those, I have to unravel those realities. You know, I'm not going to be praying to a God anymore. I'm going to activate my own God particle and I'm going to become the creator of every reality I am in and take responsibility for that. Anywhere I am not, then now I have to work through that. So every time we embody in an aspect, we now have to go into the realities where we are not living that aspect. That's embodiment. You know, that's not just hitting a high, hitting a a consciousness and then going back and playing in our human realities after that because we don't like what comes with embodiment. People don't like the rearranged part. People don't like when you have to, you know, let go of so much and de death of the ego, death of the ego, death of the ego. And when I say death of the ego, it doesn't mean the ego technically dies. It's still going to be in there. It just doesn't have it loses its voice in a sense. It's no longer making the choices anymore. So it's kind of like, it's no longer in power. You know, it might have a teeny tiny seat in the corner and you might hear it from time to time, but you know that's what it is. You know it's not speaking a truth at all. It's speaking a truth from a human, a human systems. It's not speaking a truth from soul line realities because you know our what our soul would say because the truth is always going to change what you what we should do in one reality is not what we would do in another reality how we the asset we bring forth with one person is not going to be the aspect we bring forth with somebody else because that's not what that person needs to see this person needs to see this side of me this person needs to see this side of me and you learn to be able to tell the truth tell the difference as what what do I need to bring forth here? Do I need to be soft here? Do I need to bring my power through? So when we talk about programming, that's the how deep we go. You know, that's how deep in we go. And we start to work through all that. And that can take years and years and years. So when you see someone saying they, they solved it in a day, you know, they might have become aware of something they do. And maybe they could see it. But seeing it's just the beginning. Once we see it, then we have the responsibility to now live it and stop playing into that program. And that can be very scary. There's a lot of fear that comes up when we start busting through our programs and we start saying, I don't have to live by this, this human system, but what's a good human? You know, what does that even mean? Do I have to toe this line anymore? Can I move forward without doing all of these things that they say I'm supposed to do or I'm not welcome? The human realities are very cult-like mentalities. That's how it keeps everyone in the reality. There's a fear of if you leave, there's nothing else out there. And in the beginning, there's really not that much else out there because we have to recreate it all. And that's when we start having to live our soul on realities. And they are so exquisite and they're, they are so beautiful and there's such a peace in them. And as you continue to live them, you really don't want to go back into any human realities. There, there is a while where we kind of will teeter-totter. We talk about those fourth dimensional realities where we're kind of half in human realities, half starting to 
feel soul aligned realities, even though we really haven't. We can feel the soul aligned connection, but we haven't realigned anything yet. We haven't taken our life. We haven't started the embodiment process once we're, we just kind of start to cross over. We haven't started that yet because we don't know how to do it yet. We don't know how to take our realities and realign them. So when people ask me, how do I know, you know, how do I know when I've solved a program? The reality the program was based on disappears. That's how you'll know. You'll know when people disappear, when the situation disappears, because the whole part of the situation was for you to work through the program. And normally for me, it's one situation where I'll work through it, but it's usually a situation where I don't care that much about the reality or the people in it. And that, that's going to sound harsh. Let me, let me put that a different way. I don't have an attachment to the people in it. You know, it might be me, you know, standing up for myself with a yoga instructor <laughs> or something, you know, something that it, it would be tough to do. And it might not be your natural instinct to do, to stand up and say, no, that's, this is, that's not okay. But you don't, it's not like you're going to go stand up to, you know, a spouse or a child or, or a sibling or a boss or that you'll, they'll start to see that your reality, you keep upping the game. You, you can do it in one place, but now can you do it somewhere else? Can you stand your ground and hold your power in this place? And if you can't do it here, you know, in a reality where you don't have money attached to it, you don't have the cords of attachment in the sense of an emotion attached to it. You don't have a story behind it, really. It's just a situation that's presented, you know, if we take it to the simplest thing. And, and this seems like a simple thing, but, you know, if you have somebody who walks their dog every day and the dog poops in your yard and they don't clean it up, but you never say anything. <laughs> and you don't even know the person, you don't even know the dog. And then one day you decide to say something. You're kind of standing up for yourself. That's not respectable behavior, but you don't really have a, you know, a, a much story beyond that this is just kind of ridiculous. Why do I allow this? But then I'm bitching about it, you know, as soon as they do it and walk away. But then later when you get to a different level of disrespect where it's your boss doing it or you have what well, this is how I make money, you know, this is how I do this. And now my boss wants me to do something I don't feel comfortable doing for whatever reason that is or you take it to blood family. Blood family is a big one for a lot of us um, because we have all the story about the blood family going on. You know, everything we do creates karma. Everything we've ever done in every existence has created karma. We have to work through all of that. So a lot of these realities that come back and, and smack us upside the head, in a sense, are karmic retribution. You know, for the times that we walked our dog or did something extremely disrespectful to someone else. And then they come back for us to now reap what we sowed in one, one regard. And, and remember, it might not be the exact same situation, but the energy of the disrespect will still be there. And we got to reap what we sow, and then we got to align it. You know, now can I align this? So as soon as we stand up for ourselves, the reality will not exist anymore. The whole point of the reality is for us to work through a portion of our programming. I will tell you honestly, I've never gone through a reality where I've been able to bust through all my all the programming in that one reality. Normally it's you know, it's one thing. I'll stand up for my power here and then I'll see, okay, I'm I'm realigning this. This is not respectful. I I'm not you know, I I'm not I'm going small here. I'm not I'm, I'm dimming my light. I'm not being the biggest and brightest energetic being I am. You know, I'm not bringing my power. I'm not bringing my angel energy. I'm not bringing those things. Maybe because of judgment. Maybe because of, you know, fear of, you know, I, I won't be, uh, you know, accepted here anymore. Or there won't be another reality for me to go to. Or I'll lose out on all these human things going on here. So we're going to have a lot of reasons why we don't. But you'll find, for me, I can only speak for how it's worked for me, I kind of chisel through it at one at a time. I've never had just one thing I've done and go, oh my God, I busted the program. Normally it is over time. Normally I'll embody an aspect and then I'll work through every reality where I have not done certain things. And that can take, that's kind of to me the beginning. Some people call it the opening of the portal. Then you're walking through the portal. And when you walk through that portal, you're aligning all those realities where you were not acting in that aspect. You know, if you, you're embodying in an angel aspect, you're going to walk through every reality where you are not kind and you are going to have to show your kindness, even if you are, in a sense, not being shown kindness back. And that might seem contradictory for what I just said about standing up for yourselves, but there will be some realities where you know you're supposed to be a different energy here to show people there is something else, to show people there is, there is another way to act. 
you know, and you'll know when it's time for you to do that because that's what you'll feel like you're supposed to be doing and all your realities will be starting to show you that. You might have one you align and then you might have four or five months where you might not see that for a while and then it comes back up again and that can be confusing because you think, well, I thought I'd done that. We did a part of it. But the higher your vibration goes, the more programming gets, you know, loosened in a sense, you know, like that, like a, that old uh, video game, um, oh, okay, it was like Centipede. When they were like, that's like, that's a really old game for like going through and, and kind of busting up, you know, I think it was blocks. I can't remember. I can't remember what it is now, but it busts, it's kind of busting up the programming and as the higher vibration goes, things that were okay before, they're not okay now. That was okay six months ago. That is not okay now. That is so out of alignment. Now I have to align this, but this one's more challenging for me because I got a story around it. I got... I got, I feel a sense of loss around this one. You know, I, I have an attachment to this one. I still want something out of this one. So we kind of can, and then, but you will find you can't really get out of it in a sense. I mean, get out of, you can't get out of aligning it because it'll just keep pushing you. Um, I kind of touched on this in the video I just did. The harder we resist breaking that program, the harsher the you know it's kind of like the force is gonna get harder and harder outside because we're doing it to ourselves the more we double down you know the more we keep going back into it we're like okay that was okay yeah that's fine you, you can do that to me that's fine and then it gets worse next time you know it might take six months for it to come back around again but it comes back around again because we're in that loop we're on that hamster wheel we'll keep allowing it we don't want to say anything because we have all the story around it Start picking apart the story. What do you believe is true? What do you believe is not true? Do you believe there's no other reality? There's no other person? There's no other way you're going to be able to support yourself? There, there's nothing else besides where you're at in that moment. And everything else, there's nothing else out here but just this one thing. Do I really, really believe that? And is that really true? Or is that what my human programming has said that that, that is true? Is there really, do I really believe my universe is going to leave me out in the cold? Your universe will never leave you out in the cold. It might give you a teeny tiny blanket to, to, to warm yourself in because uh, every time it bought you the big blanket, and I know I can speak this for me, every time it bought me the big blanket, I was like, that's okay. I'm just going to stay in this reality right here. I, I don't need the safety nut. It's fine. I'm just going to tough it out again. And you find the neck gets smaller and, and the neck gets smaller because we're trying to teach ourselves. We're teaching ourselves how to be. We're teaching ourselves how to be our highest. We're teaching ourselves how to come from that place. That's our responsibility. No one's going to do that for us. We have to do all this. And that's when we talk about the magnitude of ascension, the magnitude of embodying in our aspects. It's so far beyond what we've ever done before. And it's not an easy journey. It's the hardest one you'll ever do. And if anyone tries to paint it as easy, that's because they're not aligning their life. I'll guarantee you that one because it's not easy. No one I know who's doing it is having an easy go. <laughs> you might have some moments when they're easier when things get aligned. And after a while, once you've kind of aligned everything, it does get kind of aligned. But once, you know, you feel like you've got most of it aligned, you have things pop up here and there, but we don't let them get out of alignment again. So it does become easier. But if someone's going to say it's never hard, that's because they're not, they're not doing that part. And eventually they're going to have to. You know, there's no getting around that part. You, you can't take a soul line template and plug it into a human reality. They're two different frequencies. They're two different channels. Like if you're looking at the television, it's two different channels. It's two different streaming services. It's two different video games. It, they're not the same thing. You cannot mush them together and do a, you know, a, a, what do they call it? A mashup. Can't do that <laughs> and think it's going to work. In the beginning, that's what we try to do because we don't understand we're still trying to judge it by human perspectives, human perceptions, human beliefs. And that's what you're working through. That's when all of a sudden you get to the part where you don't believe that anymore because you've worked through that part of that human program where you don't believe that's the only thing. You don't believe I have to do it that way. I don't believe it, that I have to act that way. I don't believe that I have to, you know, you'll hear um, a lot of people who are really in their human aspects. Oh, you have to look up yourself because no one else, you know, you can't worry about anybody else. You have to just worry about yourself. That's a very human aspect way to think. We get to a certain point. Now, there is parts of this process where we pull away and we work on ourselves. And we pull away and fill ourselves up. We pull away and respect ourselves because we never did it before. But there's a part where you enter back in. I see a lot of people that will get, be in that pull away stage. And they stay in that for a long, long time. And even though their universe is showing them it's time to re-engage, they don't want to. They don't want to go back in. They don't want to re-engage. 
in realities because when we start re-engaging in them, we have to try to align them, you know? And if we can't, we have to close them out from our highest place. We can get in that moment. And if we don't do it at our absolute highest, you'll find it's gonna come around again and we'll get another shot at it. There's never just one shot at it. <laughs> don't worry about that one. If you feel like, oh, I didn't do that very well. I've had a lot where I go back and go, yeah, I didn't do that one very well, but don't worry. There'll, there'll be another shot at it. You'll, you'll get another shot to do it again, whether with the same people or different people. You'll get another aspect. Um, something else will come through and you go, okay, I'm gonna do this one again. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tee you back up and do it again. Because that's what we're always gonna be working toward. We're gonna be working toward and getting to our highest aligned space, making sure to hold that. That's what we're working toward. And once we get there, our realities do get easier because we don't allow the misalignment. So if you're not, not sure if I work through that program, look at your reality. What realities are embraced in that program? What realities function? They're fueled by that program. Let's put it that way. If they're fueled by that program, you haven't worked through the program yet. You might be working through it. If you can see the program within the reality, that's a big step. The question now is, what are we gonna do about it? So I'm gonna leave you with that question. <laughs> what are we gonna do about it? and keep practicing the art of intuition.